HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Now, the name itself tells us a lot. Human refers to the fact that the virus specifically infects human cells, and there are other viruses that act in a similar way and they infect other species. Immunodeficiency refers to the fact that the virus ends up killing off cells of the immune system, leaving affected individuals more susceptible to infections. And then virus refers to a microorganism that has to infect a living cell in order to reproduce. HIV can be spread through sexual contact with someone with HIV or through contact with their blood or, in some cases, breast milk. So let's look at a picture of how HIV can infect a living cell. So I'll draw a cell here, and then that cell has a nucleus. And inside the nucleus, there's human DNA. And specifically, this type of cell is a CD4 positive T cell. So a CD4 cell is a very important cell of the immune system. And there are a lot of steps involved here by which HIV infects the cell and reproduces. And I'm not going to go through all of them because I just want you to grasp the major concepts. But it might be helpful to pause the video right here and then review information about cellular organelles or protein synthesis. So this CD4 cell has a particular receptor on it. And that receptor, HIV is able to recognize and bind to. So HIV, if it gets into the blood, it'll float around and then it can bind here on this receptor. So there's HIV and inside it has its own genetic material. So that's step one, binding. So then that genetic material can get into the cell. But this genetic material is different from human genetic material. And so in order for this cell to process that viral DNA and make it into new viral particles, the DNA has to get converted into something that's more similar to human DNA. And so that process is called reverse transcription. Reverse transcription. And so then I'll draw that modified DNA in a different color here. And then that modified DNA will go into the nucleus where it will integrate in with the human DNA. So it gets in there, and that process is called integration. And then from here, the cellular machinery that normally makes human proteins and the things that the human cell needs to survive will then get used to replicate the viral DNA and make new viral particles. So multiple steps here, but eventually we end up with new HIV particles. That's synthesis. And then eventually, these HIV particles will make their way outside of the cell. And one of these cells can end up making lots and lots of HIV particles. But in the process, eventually, this cell will die uh, because of the way that the virus is interfering with the system. And these HIV particles will go on and they'll find another CD4 cell to infect. And that CD4 cell will also die. So over time, the number of HIV particles goes up. Another way to say that is that the viral load increases. And then at the same time, the number of CD4 cells will go down. In other words, the CD4 count will go down. And if the number of CD4 cells gets very low, that's when we say that the person has AIDS. Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. 
So AIDS is really the late stage of having an HIV infection. So if the person gets treated earlier on and the viral load gets kept in check, then they might not progress to AIDS. And when a person has AIDS, their CD4 count is so low that it's hard for them to mount an immune response if they get an infection. And so people with AIDS then become more susceptible to opportunistic infections. Opportunistic infections. And opportunistic infections are infections that most people don't get because their immune system is able to fight it off. But people with AIDS don't have enough CD4 cells to mount a very strong immune response. And so it's these opportunistic infections that many times end up killing patients with HIV, not the HIV itself.